Right, this is synapses. Um, a synapse is the gap between two neuron cells. Neurons don't actually touch each other. So here we might have, for example, a sensory neuron, and this might be the next uh, neuron, the motor neuron. So there's actually a very small gap, um, it's about 20 nanometers um, across, which isn't very big, um, but it's enough to slow um, the nerve impulse down because the nerve impulse is travelling quite quickly along this um, axon. If it's a myelinated axon, if it's got the fatty sheath around it, at maybe about 400 metres per second. Across the gap, it slows down considerably. Um, slows the speed of the nerve impulse down to about 15 metres per second. So how does it do it? Well, the nerve impulse has travelled all the way along our axon and it's come to the end. Here's our nerve impulse. And what we have in the end of the neuron is a chemical that we would call neurotransmitter. Which I'm represented with these blobs of green and yellow plasticine. Now when the impulse reaches the end these neurotransmitter molecules diffuse out into the gap and they diffuse across the synapse and on the other side what we have are receptor molecules and these have a particular or a specific shape to the neurotransmitter. The neurotransmitter fit into these receptor sites and that will then cause another nerve impulse to be passed along the motor neuron. So our impulse travels down, neurotransmitter diffuses across the gap and then continues in the next neuron. Now what then has to happen is that this neurotransmitter must be broken down by the action of enzymes and it's actually then reabsorbed back into our sensory neuron and it gets recycled back into neurotransmitter. Okay, now if those molecules of neurotransmitter aren't broken down and they stay um, in the receptor, this motor neuron will continue to send nerve impulses down here. So if this was, for example, a motor neuron controlling your breathing in and out, it might continually be telling your muscles controlling your breathing to, to stay contracted, in which case you would suffocate. So it's quite important that these receptor sites don't get blocked off and that the enzymes that break down these um, the neurotransmitter are able to work. Now some drugs, I'm not going to use a couple of red discs here to represent the drug, um, a lot of drugs actually will work at the synapse. So for example, um, what Prozac does is, Prozac is, is a drug that's a chemical used in um, preventing uh, conditions like depression. And what Prozac does is it blocks off this neuron so that the neurotransmitter can't get back in and it stays in the gap and so it keeps firing these nerve impulses down. And in the case of Prozac, the synapse it blocks is blocking off a neurotransmitter called serotonin. And this is found in the brain. And it's a chemical neurotransmitter we would associate with um, feelings of happiness. So people with depression often either aren't producing enough serotonin. Um, and so Prozac helps by keeping what serotonin there is in the synapse. It's not going to reabsorb back in there. Um, other drugs like ecstasy also have a similar effect in that they can um, prevent this uh, reuptake of um, serotonin and so can lead to feelings of uh, temporary feelings of happiness. Um, although there are obviously un um, unknown effects from the use of ecstasy in that it's a, an unregulated illegal drug uh, and long term effects it's certainly not clear what the effects could be any kind of drug that is affecting um, the action of your brain potentially can have damaging effects <laughs>